Jesus, is, he just came home. It was a big old homecoming. They've heard about all the things that he's been doing, and, and here comes Jesus. He's coming home. You would have think that this would have been the best place for Jesus to do his best miracles. But we all know that what they say about familiarity. Well, my understanding is that familiarity breeds something. Familiarity breeds contempt. I don't think I have a word up there, but it breeds contempt. It's like familiarity, familiarity says, you know, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, big deal. Familiarity is like that little boy who grew up in Sunday school and when he knew the sort of answers that you're supposed to give to questions in church, one day the teacher asked, what's brown, furry, has a long tail and stores nuts for the winter? So the little boy mutters an answer. I guess the answer is Jesus. But it sure sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> Familiarity breeds contempt. You're in Sunday school. Sister Lale's leading the class. She asks a question. Instead of giving an answer, you crack a joke. Contempt. You knew the answer, but that's just one example. Uh, contempt also causes you, well, you know, uh, Brother Larry's going to teach a lesson. Well, Brother Larry's not, he's not been around much lately, so, uh, so contempt. Well, we're familiar with Larry. We don't need to listen to Larry because we know him. What? Wait, he's standing to teach. You might want to listen to the teacher. So I say amen. Some of us are so familiar with Jesus. Oh, here it comes. So familiar with Jesus. We grew up with Jesus in church. And when we started hearing about supernatural possibilities, we might get cynical and offended because of something that happened to us at church or at camp. Or we might just be so familiar with the whole thing that we respond, yeah, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And it didn't work out so well. Oh my goodness, I wish I could stay there for a while. But then I might become contemptuous myself. Are we going to be like a small-minded, hard-hearted townspeople who grew up with Jesus? Or are we going to be like the disciples that left everything to follow him? Are we going to be like Paul and Silas, who, when they were put in prison, they're just going to sing, sing praises and pray and pray and sing praises and pray and sing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're the, the place where the earth is shaken. Are, are we going to be like this? I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and he says, as a son, a grandson, a great-grandson, and a great-great-grandson of Pentecostal pastors and evangelists, listen to what he says. I was very familiar with the supernatural, but my heart had grown hard because, though I had seen it all, I hadn't often experienced the supernatural from my own life. And he said, his own point of repentance didn't have to do with cynicism or offense, but with the familiarity that followed to embrace a form of godliness while denying its power. Some of us, that's what's happened. You have pursued a form of godliness, but you've denied the power of God. You shut the door. You've said, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Some of us, maybe we don't say it that way. Maybe it's a little bit more cynical. I got this. I don't need you. I don't know about you, but I need, I need the Holy Spirit to get up in the morning. Can I get a witness? Uh, let me take Brother Mike, Sister Amanda, I need the Holy Spirit to walk out of this building last night. 
I almost said, I almost called on you, Brother Marvin. Then I realized my phone wasn't on my person. So I got carried away. I was trying to sing that song last night. Did some of this. And when, then when I did some of this, something happened. Now, I knew Brother Margo would come over and help me if the door hadn't been locked. <laughs> but I didn't say that to say this is why I called on Jesus. The first thing I called was, oh, God, I'm going to need help with this. I'm going to need help with this. They want to get up off the floor. I went down. Seriously, fallen can't get up kind of down. Brother Lee, I've never experienced this. When, 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 when I broke my knee many years ago, or, or when, when I, I got messed up here just a few years ago, I was able to walk out of that. Here I am in the, in the house of God, and I couldn't even get up off the floor. So I just laid there for a few minutes and called on God. Maybe that's what some of us need. Maybe we need to get to a place where we're so broken, we're so hurt, we're so injured, we can't do anything else except call on Him. This Jesus that we know so well, he does such great miracles. But we haven't seen it in a while. Maybe we're not looking for it. Maybe we're taking too much for granted, just like we do many of our family members. Or maybe it's a family, like a family member said, well, you know what, we, he, we don't really like that family member because he doesn't do things the way we do. How many of you know there's probably a lot of truth in that? How many think Jesus does things a whole lot different than the way we do? Yes. And we need to find out what his pattern, what his, what his mode of operation is. Can I tell you what his mode of operation is? His mode of operation is love. His mode of operation is grace. His mode of operation is forgiveness. His mode of operation is reconciliation. His mode of operation is help and healing. His mode of operation is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's his mode of operation. And if you want to see him moving, we need to get on board in his operation. I mean, I want Jesus to be, to be more able to heal more people in our presence. How many of you want to see that? Amen. Take the shackles off my feet, I want to dance. How about that? I just want to praise him. I want a reason to praise him. I've got one, but it doesn't hurt at all to say, God, I know you've done it. You can do it again. And what you've done for one, you can do for another. And where there seems to be no way, God can make a way. God, I want to see that. I want to see, I, I, I'm, not, I'm going to get on, on a political platform. I want to see America great again. Wait a minute. If America's going to be great again, the church has to be great again. Amen. God has to be seen as great again, as the great I am again and again, as he still is. Somebody say amen. I want Jesus to be able to do more than just healing a few people. I want to see the mighty supernatural works that he intends to do right where we are. Amen. But if that's going to happen, we're going to have to be willing to get up and dance. The Bible says that we have to prepare ourselves. You know, you know the clothing we put on? In the morning, helmet of salvation, breastplate, right? You got that belt and the pants on, right? Helps you maintain dignity, right? You got shoes. You put shoes on because, what? Well, you're going to have them shoes on because you're going to go deliver the gospel. Oh, wait a minute. And that sword and that shield. That sword, what, what, what is the sword? That sword that is the word of God. That shield that is a faith that you have. And, it's, and get this, that faith is not just there to... To protect you. Did you know that sometimes that shield is a weapon? Sometimes that shield is something that you use to help protect somebody else. Sometimes that shield is something that you use to help see someone else get healed. Sometimes that shield is something, and that sword is something that you use to help someone else come to the knowledge, a saving knowledge of Jesus. Sometimes it's not just for you, just for your own simple protection. That helmet of salvation, I love that part. Because we need to keep our head in the game. Because I need the Holy Spirit because I want to know what God wants.